So you have diabetes, you have pre-diabetes, maybe you've had type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes for 20 years, maybe you were just diagnosed. I want you to know there are many factors to why you have diabetes. Hi everyone, my name is James Marin. I'm a holistic registered dietitian, environmental nutritionist, author, speaker, and diabetes expert. I'm here to talk to you today about the many factors that have caused you to develop diabetes. My message for you here today is, yes, you have control. You can take huge amounts of effort and you can take willpower and passion to, to reverse your diabetes symptoms, to better manage your diabetes. But I want you to understand a lot of energy has gone into you developing diabetes or more specifically, us creating the society that facilitates diabetes. Yes, you heard me correct. Our environment, our communities, our society facilitates diabetes, and I'll explain that, okay? Because getting into factor number one of why diabetes is so prevalent, it has to do with federal government, right? Federal laws and policy. More specifically, the Farm Bill. Now, I'm not gonna get too deep into each one. I just wanna give you all of these different factors so you're more aware, you have a better, you know, global understanding of what's going on, and you can Google individual, you know, each individual factor if you like, but I'm just gonna outline it, and I'm gonna take some of the burden off your shoulders, where, yes, you are in control, yes, you can do a lot to improve your health, but it's not entirely your fault that you have diabetes. Okay, our society makes it very easy to get diabetes and really none of this was by accident, whether it was bad decisions or just a series of unfortunate events. But in any case, we as a society, federally, locally, you know, governments and other organizations, we facilitate this diabetes epidemic within our country and now globally, okay? So factor one, government, federal policies, most notably the Farm Bill. Okay, so look into that more, but the Farm Bill dictates, you know, what crops we grow, you know, what subsidies we provide, and that uses, you know, tax dollars to do that. And so that's why items on the dollar menu or soda and juice and all these other sugary, sugar-sweetened beverages and fatty processed, you know, animal fat products are so cheap. I mean, do you ever think why, you know, a salad at Starbucks and a nice, you know, organic tea and some, you know, fresh fruit or fresh fruit bar is like 15 or $20 where the same amount of food, but different food, right? A dollar menu with fries and a Coke is like two or $3. That's not by accident. Okay. So another big factor is going to be city planning and urban design. Okay, so the way we now design our cities, right, is to facilitate you needing to drive everywhere. And that's very, very apparent in California. Some states, and depending where you live or if you're out of the US, uh, you're, you're very, very lucky because some cities and some countries have more of a focus on walking, right, and biking and not really needing a car to get around. I can tell you in California where I live, that is not the case, it's quite opposite. We design cities, or I should say, we design you know, urban centers where the store and the market and the grocery store and the laundry mat or whatever the case is, is in one place and then you live in another. So either you have to walk extremely far and it's in extremely inconvenient or you need to be in a car driving everywhere. So it makes it less likely for you to exercise and walk, okay? So another big factor is gonna be advertising and marketing, right? If you look, even if you did take a walk somewhere, billboards and signs and then you got your TV and radio and now for marketing to kids at a young age, right? So this constant barrage of marketing of burgers and fries and sodas and candies and just food in general. We see it everywhere we go, we hear it everywhere we go. It's on our phone, you know, now they have target marketing, so that's a whole other topic, but you get the idea we're constantly barraged with, with all this, you know, food everywhere, right? We hear it, we see it, you know, it, it makes us crave it, okay? Another big factor is gonna be work-life balance, okay? so. Especially in the US, you know, people on average put in 60 hour work weeks, right? Where we're constantly working. That means we really don't have time to think about food or cook or rest or give, 
give ourselves the stress relief we need. So that constant need to make money and work because you have bills to pay and, or maybe your job doesn't pay that well. So you have to get another job and you're working, you know, 70 hours a week or you're working two different jobs at 30 hours and 30 hours, you know, whatever the case is, it's that constant, you know, go, 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 fast paced environment that sets you up for disaster, right? Sets you up for high stress sets you up for looking for those quick fast foods and that really put a dent in your health okay and the, and so again the the main kind of theme with all these factors i'm talking about is that a lot of these are not in your control you know generally speaking however what's really cool i want to give you hope at the end of this again something i said early on is you can still have a lot of individual changes, right? You can still make changes to decide, well, yeah, there might be this fast food, but this fast food is healthier. Maybe I can do some of this healthy frozen food, right? You can still do convenience quick foods, but you can make healthier choices. Now, another big point number two to this, this hope, right? I wanna give you hope, is that the more of you that are aware of this, of what our government's doing, of what our city planners are doing, right? Of what, you know, the, the corporate interests are doing with marketing to us all the time. You can control that. You can then, you know, demand at your city level and your state level and the federal level that we make important changes, right? Because these just, these changes aren't just for us right now. They're for our children in the future, right? They're to promote a better future. Okay, I know this is pretty heavy. This is going pretty big and pretty wide and pretty global and you know holistic. It's taking a big wide view of what the heck is going on in our society, but it's important that you're aware of this. Okay, learn more, learn about the environment, learn about the food, learn about all these factors. And so you can be conscious and aware, click the link below and that's gonna give you more information and also more specifics on what you can do individually. Meal planning and what to eat, what not to eat, you know, how to get off a lot of your medication or all of your medication. Click the link below and learn more. Share this with friends and family that need to hear this message, that need to be educated on this global and wide perspective so we can make change, not just in ourselves, but in our community. All right, guys, as always, if you like this information, share it. Give us a like and have a wonderful day.